We were actually just looking for property outside of the city limits, about five acres or something. And we contacted a realtor and he said, now the house, he was giving us a hard time. He had already been in. He said, the house you probably don't want, you can just doze it down or whatever. And at the time he didn't know the history either. And then we came inside and we're like, holy cow. And then we started learning the history and found out that it was 11.2 acres and also found out it's actually the last property that was owned by any Brenda or Humphreys or related to Humphreys. Marie Humphreys was a man who came from Wales, finished I think like the third grade, but was a very, very intelligent man. He actually tried to hijack, during Prohibition, tried to hijack one of Al Capone's trucks. He was a young man and Al Capone liked him so much, they, it, it, he said, bring him to me and then he put him to work. So he worked for Al Capone, during which time Al Capone at some point got put in prison and Murray Humphreys became public enemy number one. Can you see in here? When we've been trying to clean it up, it looked like someone actually lived up here. A lot of people from Chicago, a lot of gangster people have been in this house. And it tells you in the book that they would come here for rest and relaxation, probably running more than likely. There were two beams across the top here that were carved by a Native American that did the same, same one that did the staircase. Those were taken out and sold what we've been told for $120,000 and that they're in a museum in New York. And all throughout the property, there's different places that you can tell were there would be steps and there will be flowers and don't know exactly what it is, but all, all throughout there, rose bushes planted around trees with little steps and um, light posts. There's light posts all over the property that I don't know, you know, what they did or if it, I mean, obviously it was all lit at one time. We've got um, several people and people that say they swam in it actually that the bottom of the Olympic sized pool was lined with silver dollars. We obviously never saw that, but we've heard that from more than one person, more than two people, we've heard it from several. Um, there's an insurance agent in Norman that we get our insurance from that her husband said he used to come out here to parties and they would swim in the pool and he said that, that that was true, that that wasn't bogus. They said when they came out though, their parents would have to drop them off or if their parents stayed, they were only allowed in a certain part of the house. They couldn't go anywhere else. The doors were all shut and locked, which you can tell all the doors have deadbolts, all of them. The closets have deadbolts. If you look at the woodwork, he did, it tells in the book that he built this whole house. Uh, now, I mean, I don't know if there's some of it that he had to contract out or what. It was built in the 30s, and this is all solid wood. It's very intricate woodwork, especially if you think about back then. All the rock work out front, I mean, that to be back in the 1930s was also something that was, you know, very, I mean, there's a lot of work put into it. I mean, there's so much history behind it, and yet it just seems like it's been forgotten, you know. And back then, I guess they didn't know him as a mobster, you know, a gangster, because he would come here and around Christmas time and Thanksgiving, he would take needy families' food and clothing and, and gifts and money. And they knew him around here as a very quiet man. He kept to himself and his family. But around here, everybody knew him as a very good guy.